Welcome everybody, thanks for tuning in for our late. Uh, <laughs> Welcome everybody, thanks for tuning in today for our latest dissected series episode where we're gonna be taking a deep dive look at the FSA EMTV Boost carbon wheels. FSA started making wheels back in 2014. They have their own wheel facility in Taiwan where they can test, develop, and build a lot of wheels. And each one of these wheels is hand built and assembled. Um, we were lucky enough to spend some time talking to these guys and learning a bit about their operation, where they test and develop the wheels up in the Pacific Northwest of Washington. And gotta say, over the several months that we've spent riding these wheels, um, they've held up and given us a lot of things to think about. Let's touch on some of the key features before we dive into too much tech. The wheels are available in either 27 and a half or 29 inch diameter, come in a 28 hole, two cross, 14 gauge spoke design, are available in either uh, Shimano Micro Spline, SRAM XD, or 9 through 11 speed free hub bodies. When FSA was looking to create this EMTB specific wheels, uh, strength and stiffness wasn't really the only thing that they were looking at. They obviously know how to make a pretty stiff and durable wheel. Uh, the gradient is the base of this new EMTB wheel. Instead, what they were looking for was to give a durable, reliable wheel set that would withstand the added weight, as well as the added mileage, torque, and power that an e-bike generates. And because of that, they've gone to a lot of steel parts within the hub, pauls, and free hub body. The wheels also feature a PRA bearing preload adjustment, 6903 bearings, a two-year warranty, and for those who like to customize wheels to match their bike, there are decal sets available to change up the graphics kit. So we've been riding the mullet configuration and the wheel weight was 1,853 grams. Also in line with wanting to increase the durability for a wider range, there is a 150 kilogram or 330 pound system weight, which means you and the bike combined as long as that's 330 pounds or less, you are good to go on these wheels. They offer a 29 millimeter inner width, which is plenty wide to give you a good shape out of that tire, but not too wide to where you start squaring off the knobs. So now we'll move into some of the rim features and design elements. FSA opted to use a four millimeter offset, which we were lucky enough to catch up with the guys from FSA and talk to them a bit about what that offset means and what that translates to for riders. So the main thing that we do on all of our mountain wheels and especially our e-bike wheels is we do a four millimeter offset in the spoke bed of the rim, uh, allowing for very even uh, spoke tension. The non-drive side or non-disc side is usually at about 90 to 95% of the drive side uh, or disc brake side for the front means it an exceptionally strong wheel. Uh, having that even spoke tension and very often the same spoke length means you get a very strong balanced wheel and that at the end of the day is what's going to give you a lot of strength. So yeah, four millimeter offsets in our, in our rims for the spokes. Uh, rim widths for both of our e-bike wheels is a 29 mil inner width. Uh, the carbons are a little bit of a deeper rim, the aluminum's a little bit of a shallower, wheel, shallower rim for that. Now how different is the ride going to be between the carbon and aluminum wheel? Uh, the carbon is definitely going to be a nice stiff wheel. You're going to have great turning, great acceleration. Um, it's exceptionally strong. The aluminum will give you a little bit more compliancy for your hands and be a little bit more comfortable on your hands at the end of the day. Um, so that's going to be ride quality wise the main difference. Right. But in terms of strength and durability, they're going to both be there. One's just going to have a little bit different ride characteristics. Correct. Yeah, they, it's just going to be ride ride quality that'll change a little bit. Strength is there for both. One of the other key design elements for this wheel set is their asymmetrical offset. If you look at the drive side versus the non-drive side of the rim, you'll notice that there's a much rounder profile on the drive side and a much flatter, squarer profile on the non-drive side. Now, what that means is obviously uh, braking forces and acceleration forces put very different loads and stress on spokes and rims. 
And by having this offset, the uh, desired effect was to reduce flex and torsional movement or twist as the wheel is accelerating or decelerating. And by having that offset, they can run fewer spokes and still maintain the stiffness and strength, which brings weight savings into the game and enhanced ride characteristics. Now, when we first got these wheels, we were a little skeptical as to the 28 spoke build, thinking, you know, maybe we need 32 with the added weight and aggressive riding style that we'd be putting this specialized Levo through. Uh, we very quickly found that if you can build a 28 spoke wheel correctly, uh, stiffness is not a concern. In fact, we asked FSA why they didn't go with a 32 spoke build, and they sort of smiled and said we tested it and it was way too stiff. And uh, based on the stiffness out of this 28 spoke wheel, I definitely believe them because um, it is definitely a pretty stiff wheel set as it sits. Other main elements that dictate a wheel's ride performance and feel on the trail are rim depth. These again have a 29 millimeter inner rim width with a 30 millimeter rim depth. Now obviously the more or less carbon you have, the shallower or deeper the profile of the rim, the more material you have and the stiffer the wheel tends to be. Now stiffness isn't always the goal when you're building a wheel. Obviously uh, comfort, traction are key factors when it comes to evaluating a wheel. If, if something is overly stiff, you're gonna have reduced traction because that bike's gonna just be skipping over the top. You're not gonna be able to stay on the ground and let the wheel do a little bit of flexing to keep that rubber down. It's just gonna wanna be deflecting or bouncing straight up, which puts more feedback into the suspension and your body. Um, and so those are elements that definitely FSA worked to tune as they developed this wheel set. Now, different riders in different terrains have different demands, um, obviously a 210 pound rider who's in the Pacific Northwest is going to want a very different stiffness than a 160 pound rider in Southern Utah or Phoenix. Um, you know, you're going to need a wheel that has some compliancy that does flex and move, keeps that tire down on the ground. Whereas someone who's just railing berms in nice, wet, tacky soil, they're going to feel like that wheel might be a noodle and prefer something that's definitely on the stiffer side, like this FSA. EMT boot. As you can see by the look of these wheels, we have definitely been putting a ton of miles in them over the last few months. Um, part of making these dissected series videos with the helps of the brands is, is getting to know them, learning how they work, so that way we can ask questions that matter of the engineers, the developers, the pro athletes that helped make the products happen. Our takeaways from this wheel set so far are that they are incredibly stiff, they are durable, they are low maintenance. Um, we have been beating on them quite a bit, uh, running with high pressure, low pressure, trying to just slam this back end into as much weird abusive stuff as we can, and these spokes are still tight. FSA does suggest after the first 50 to 100 miles you do a recheck on tension just because they are a hand-built wheel. Honestly, ours held up very well. Just a couple of spokes that sort of settled in after that first break-in ride, and we haven't had to touch them since. They are still true. We haven't done any major damage to them, even though we've been dragging them through lava rocks and uh, big, sharp tree roots all over the Pacific Northwest. If you'd like to learn more detail about our interview with the FSA engineers, please head over to thelonewolf.com. We've got a lot of questions that they took the time to answer and will help educate you on not only their wheels, but wheel construction as a whole. At $1,682, they're certainly in that price point of a pretty high-end wheel, but not into that $2,000 range where some of the more elite level carbon wheels get you. And uh, again, they come with a two-year warranty, customizable graphics, and are definitely gonna be built to last under the abuse of an e-bike and the massive amount of miles that you'll throw at it. That, in a nutshell, is the new FSA EMTV Boost Carbon Wheels. Whoa! FSA also has a number of wheels available in alloy or carbon, um, not just e-bike wheels, so go over to their site, take a look if you're interested. 
Uh, we'd like to thank them for giving us the opportunity to make this video. Let us know if FSA is on your radar, if you've thought of their wheels in the past or had a good experience with them or a bad experience. And we'd like to know what you guys think. Uh, we look forward to spending more time on these in the future and we appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much and we'll see you out on the trails. <laughs> Dang it.